those who are sick and injured now have a new place to go for treatment. Good evening, this is CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Denise Douglas. Well, a much needed void has been filled in Suitland Dimensions Healthcare Systems has opened a new health and wellness center. Our Byron Scott was there for the ribbon cutting. At a ribbon cutting ceremony today in Suitland, local officials declared It's a big deal for us. This the big deal is the New Dimensions Healthcare System Family Health and Wellness Center on Silver Road. It means they can come right to their community and get quality health care, get dental services, they can get um, OBGYN services, mm -hmm. they're going to be midwives here. And so this mm -hmm. is for this community, this means that they're going to have some of the best services possible. And people who did not have transportation to get places could come right here. Pastor Brenda Cardwell was one of several area residents who came to see and tour the clinic. She plans to pass on the word to her congregation. What do you tell your the congregants about this place? What do you say to them? Walk down the street. <laughs> if you need some care, it's available and go and check it out. The center plans outreach programs as well to area schools. Officials say that it fills a wide health care void in the area. But the thing that, that we're most proud about is this is transforming neighborhoods. When we talk about it and uh, you want to see it in reality, uh, it's right here. In Suitland, Byron Scott, CTV News. Byron tells us that the center officially opened on Monday. Well, Maryland ranks first in the nation for quality and patient safety, but near the bottom for medical liability. The state got high marks in three out of five categories, but an overall C grade in a new report card on America's emergency care environment. That grade caused Maryland to slip from its fourth place ranking in 2009 to 10th in the nation. The report card is produced by the American College of Emergency Physicians, a specialty group representing emergency medicine. The O'Malley administration wants to boost money for Maryland early childhood education programs in fiscal year 2015. Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown and leaders of the General Assembly announced the proposal as part of the governor's legislative package today in Annapolis. Rochelle Metzger has the details. Walter Reap is principal of Germantown Elementary School in Annapolis. He says meeting the existing demand for early childhood education programs is a challenge. We're talking about not only school readiness, but we're talking about college and career readiness. So we're introducing students to a culture of learning, and we're introducing families that may have had to wait a year uh, to be expo exposed to that as early as possible. This past year, Reap says more than 100 children applied for 92 slots in pre-kindergarten, leaving some to miss out on a program designed to prepare them for school. Today in Annapolis, state leaders laid out a proposal to increase pre-K opportunities for nearly 1,600 Maryland children, providing more than $4 million in fiscal year 2015 for the expansion. The majority of our students live in poverty. Uh, we're limited to the number of physical spaces we have in our building. Uh, so having additional funding is excellent. The bill also establishes a fund that would allow the business and civic communities to contribute money and let local school districts and providers apply for funding. We think that when we arrive at 2018 with the full build out of half day pre-K uh, that we'll be able to cover up to 26,000 students. Teachers and administrators say they applaud the program's expansion, but with the additional students comes a need for more classroom space, something schools across Maryland simply don't have. The proposed budget does designate more than $280 million for public school construction. In Annapolis, Rochelle Metzger, CTV News. And the Maryland State Department of Education would be responsible for managing the pre-K expansion fund, its distribution, and the selection of additional programs, as well as their location. Well, should Maryland students skip state assessment exams? That's a question educators and lawmakers are trying to find an answer to. The MSAs are a federal requirement to measure school performance, but the exam doesn't match up with the new Common Core curriculum being taught to students, leaving many to ask if it makes sense to spend the time and money to administer the test. Montgomery County Delegate Al Carr says the issue is something lawmakers will try to sort out over the next 90 days. There are a couple of bills. There are, uh, there's a Senate bill, there's a House bill, so we're going to try very hard to see if there is a way that we can uh, get a waiver or not have to impose these tests that aren't doing anything to help kids learn or to help teachers do better. 
And the current state superintendent of schools, Lillian Lowry, is a vocal proponent of the assessment exams. Well, switching gears to the a crime front. That brazen daytime robbery and shooting in Camp Springs yesterday morning ended with four under arrest. Arrested. Uh, a short time later, the other two suspects were apprehended by Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police Department. They were transported to a station in Washington, D.C., and they will be later on extradited back here to Prince George's County. Identifying those four men, 25-year-old Antonio Cooper, 21-year-old Maurice Foreman, 19-year-old Eugene Watkins, and 18-year-old Jawan Watkins. Police say they robbed an armored car truck in the 4800 block of Allentown Road near Andrews Air Force Base. They fled the scene down Branch Avenue into D.C., but not before shooting at two Good Samaritans following them in a truck. The Good Samaritans were not hurt, but helped police track down the suspects right into D.C.